In this video, I will be walking you through how to use Vernier Graphical Analysis to create graphs with multiple data sets plotted on the same graph. When you first open Vernier Graphical Analysis, you should be taken to this screen here. And you get this menu with three options. The first option is to collect data with a sensor like a force probe or a motion detector. The second option here is to share data. And the third option here is what we are going to use, which is to manually type in our data ourselves. So we click on that. And you should see a screen like this with a graph on the left and a data set on the right. And um, in order to plot your data, all you need to do is type the data into the data table. Or if you have it already in a spreadsheet like Google Sheets, you can just copy the data from that spreadsheet, control C, and paste it into this data set, control V. Um, I'm going to start by renaming everything, and then I'll type in my data. To rename the x-axis variable, you click on these three dots here and say column options. I am going to be plotting the volume of a dis, uh, volume of displaced fluid on the x-axis. That was my independent variable. And that has units of meters, caret three for cubic meters. And I will press apply. Uh, before I do that, I want to point out on this screen, you can choose the symbol you are using for your different data sets. So it may be helpful to choose different shapes for different data sets. Um, you can also choose uh, the display precision. So if you aren't seeing all of your decimals, you can go here and say, no, show me eight decimals or four decimals. So this menu is how you change how your data looks, both on the graph and in the data table. And now I can press apply. And there we go, volume of displaced fluid, meters cubed. Uh, my y-axis, I'm going to click those three dots also, press column options, click on it, and the dependent variable was the buoyant force in this lab. And buoyant force has units of capital N newtons. And for this symbol, um, you, know, you can use, again, whatever you want, whatever color. Uh, choose your decimal places or how many significant figures you want. And then you can choose scientific notation if you want it. Press apply. There's our buoyant force. And I'm going to rename this data set, not data set one, that's not helpful, but maybe this was the data set where I had um, tap water and I had a brass rod. So that's this data set here. And I can now type in my data and maybe the data looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, going down for the volume of displaced fluid. Uh, that's a very unrealistic number for cubic meters of volume, but it'll work for illustrating how to use the software. And maybe the buoyant force readings are something like two, four, six, eight, and 10. There we go. And you can see the data is automatically plotted. There's a few things we need to do to go from good to great on this graph. Um, I can see the x-axis is labeled with quantity and units automatically. Great. The y-axis is the same. I look at my origin. I see, oh, no, my first data point's the bottom left-hand corner, and I really would like to see 0, 0. I also notice that there's no title on this graph. So how do I change those things? Those things can be changed by clicking on the graph options menu in the bottom left-hand corner. And then the very bottom option says edit graph options. When I click on that, that's where I can put a title for this graph, and I'm going to call it buoyant force versus, oh, I should spell buoyant correctly, buoyant force versus volume of displaced fluid. And I'm going to say I'm going to do um, in tap water. So I'm going to do all four rods, but in tap water. So I have this clearly indicating that I'm looking at the tap water experiment. I'm going to double check that I've got points checked. Connect the dot lines are off and bars are also off. We don't want a bar graph. We just want individual data points. And then for the scaling issue with the x-axis in the origin and the y-axis in the origin, I go x-axis range. And then instead of automatic scaling, I'm going to choose always show zero. And that will show zero on the x-axis. And then under y-axis range, I'm going to choose scaling and always show zero. And that should show zero on the y-axis. And if I click out of this now, I can see I see zero on my x-axis zero on my y-axis, and my title is uh, indicating what's being plotted, y-axis versus x-axis, and then which control variable I am plotting here. Uh, the last thing I want to do is run a line of best fit through my data. Again, that, or that happens again in this menu down here, this graph options menu. I click on it, and I want to apply a curve fit, and you have 
Uh, linear fit works for my data. Um, you'll have to see if it works for your data or not. And if it doesn't, you have quadratic fits, proportional fits, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm going to stick with the linear fit for my data and press apply. And there we have it. There is one great graph. How do I add multiple data sets to this same graph? What you are going to do is click the three dots on the data table next to your data set title. And you can add a brand new data set to, um, to the software. And you can see that it keeps the x-axis label and the y-axis label the same, which is great because we're plotting volume of displaced fluid and buoyant force again. But now I'm going to rename this data set, and perhaps this is the data set that is tap water with the aluminum rod. And we can rename that, and now I can see which data set is which. And again, maybe my numbers for the volumes were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the buoyant forces maybe go 3, 6, 9, uh, 12, 15. I can see I chose scientific notation here, which gave me this weird thing. I don't like that. I'm going to click on these three dots, column options, and um, or maybe I just want more significant figures. So give me three significant figures. There we go. That looks nice. Um, problem solved. All right. So I can see if I look back on my graph now that only the most recent data set has been plotted, the tap water and aluminum rod. But I can click on the y-axis label and toggle which data sets are plotted and which aren't. And so I'm just going to do two data sets in this video, but you should do either three or four, depending on your experiment. And we can go ahead and close this. I can see both of these are dots. I don't love that. So I'm going to go to buoyant force number two here, column options. I'm going to change this symbol to a, let's do the squares. And then X out of that, or no, sorry, apply. And now I've got circles and squares. That helps differentiate those a little bit. And last but not least, I want to do a line of best fit through both of these. Graph options in the bottom left corner. Apply a curve fit. Linear, apply. I get the line of best fit for both of these. I'll want a legend to go along with this. And you can do that by going to graph options and then toggling on graph legend. And um, that legend looks bad. I don't like that legend. Don't do that. Instead, go to graph options and annotate your curve, add an annotation. And then for the blue, I'm going to choose to write aluminum rod and sort of put that right on the aluminum rod data. And I'll add another annotation and say brass rod and add that annotation. Here. So the annotations, again, live under this graph option, add an annotation. That looks much nicer than that uh, legend. That was an unhelpful legend. And there we have it. This is a great looking data set. Uh, sometimes this linear fit box is going to cover up the data, and that's OK. You can take a screenshot of this, and that looks OK. Your other option, which sometimes looks better, is to go to this menu in the top left corner and say Export, and then it will create a PNG image where the labels are a little bit bigger. This ends up taking up more space, so you want to make sure that the image looks OK. Right now, I can see that the aluminum rod um, label is covered up by the box when I do this, so this wouldn't be good. But you can X out of this, play around with it some. Maybe the screenshot's the move. Maybe the export is the move. I'll let you decide. So you should do this um, with all of your data sets, see what your graphs look like. And then the last thing I want to say is you should save your work in case you have edits to make later. This does not automatically save. It is not a cloud-based program. And so to save, top left corner again, and you can save this experiment uh, by giving it a name. I'm going to call this um, buoyant force example. Save it to my documents. You can save it wherever you want. Press save. And now I can reopen this later if I need to make some edits. And that's how you create a graph in graphical analysis, which shows uh, multiple data sets, has linear fits, has a nice legend to it, or a nice annotation, um, nice title, all of those things.